Hey there, listen today. Welcome to day 1243 of What Shift You Now. Sharon Horn also here in my crown. I was looking at some filters, couldn't I switch this particular page where I record this video? Uh, I switched to the new format on Facebook and I'm struggling. I'm not gonna lie. It's uh it's been frustrating because now I have to switch back and forth between this profile and my personal profile, Sharon Horn Elstrom, my name, my main page, my profile, and it's it's really annoying. I and maybe it will get better. I'm sure it'll get better. It's like anything else that changes on Facebook or on any other platform. It takes a day or two to get used to it, and then we're like, we just do it automatically, and we don't even think about it. But for right now, it's like I wish I had a magic wand. I do have a magic wand. Ask my granddaughter. She lends me her magic wand when she's not here. I have custody of the magic wand, which incidentally lights up if I could find the button to push. Okay, I'm dawdling. I'm obvious. Oh, there it goes. Ta da! Get some magic wand. I would take my magic wand and my crown and I would flip it back to the way it was, or I'd actually create a couple of people that would just do it all for me. Although I like to do my own social media. It's my, my fun time to do. It's my fun things to do. It's me actually being me and interacting with other real human beings, which is really what social media should be. It shouldn't be hiring people to make fake posts and fake bots and fake everything for you. So I will continue to do my own social media as long as I can, as long as I can do it. I'm working on learning voice commands, but since my vision is funky and so bad, I'm working on learning how to do that. And then I will be even more efficient than I am. So record book. I'm thinking about record books today and, and primarily because our idiom for supersize your business was one for the record book. And this idiom has been around since about 1900 and it uh, came originally from sports where people would keep track of sporting events, sports statistics, you know, batting averages. I don't know if it was batting averages, but horse races, whatever sport uh, people would write down performances about and document the results and statistics that became known as a record book. Now, probably prior to that, I guarantee prior to that, people were keeping track of accounting and numbers and finances in record books. But this one means a remarkable or unusual or um, unexpected event that occurs. And usually one for the record book we think of in a positive way, but in in recent years, it's been used both ways. It can be good or bad. Somebody will do something like I'll spill something and in a particularly klutzy way, I'll spill my coffee and I'll be like, oh, there's one for the record book because I beat my own record of how klutzy I can actually be. I, I think my record so far is I fell down at the state park, sprained my ankle and it was on like a flat part of the trail. My, my, my tennis shoe just caught funny. It was wet and slippery and down I went and you know, was trying to not have to crawl back to my car. Luckily, I didn't have to. But that was my klutziness, one for the record book, although I, I try to one-up my klutziness as well. So we keep records for our businesses and for our life of things that are important to us. Some records we just keep in our mind, right? We don't need people to tell us the best thing we've ever done in our life, the most amazing thing that's ever happened to us. We don't have to write that down. However, I will say that there's power in capturing those moments, writing those moments down keeping a record or journals of your life. I like to believe that if your life is worth living, it's worth recording. And I used to keep a lot of journals. I still do it a lot. I have, look at, I've got like five notebooks around me right now. I do have a lot of notebooks and things and I write things down, hopefully for somebody else to read someday because I don't go back and read many of my notes given my, my visual challenges. I just don't go back and do that anymore. So now I just hop on here and I do a daily documentation. What am I doing? What's working? What's not? Well. For this two week period, I am in charge of my two granddaughters and well, their parents are in Alaska. And <clears throat> one is just four months old and one is six. And I now understand why we are designed to have our children when we're younger because I had a lot more energy. Even though I was an older mom, I had my kids in my 30s. I still had a lot more energy in my 30s than I do in my 60s. So it's pretty fun. I mean, the end of the day, and there is no end of the day with my four-month-old granddaughter. She's with me 24-7. Uh, I am exhausted, and I think I'm starting to look at it. I was going to take a before and after gray hair picture, and now I'm kind of wishing that I would because I swear I've gotten more gray hair. But it's been so fun and so educational. I think I'll do a lessons learned from children episode uh, that we can apply to our life and our business because I have learned a lot over the last week or so and will continue to learn until their parents get home. And hopefully I'll continue to learn for the rest of my life. So 
Our, our idiom today was one for the record book. And I, my question posed is, have you ever set a record? Share in the comments below. Hey, I set a record in track. I set a record in swimming. I set a record for the highest GPA in my college. I set a record for the best scores in whatever field or class. I set a record for being the youngest, the oldest, the, the smartest, the tallest, the thinnest, the shortest, whatever. What have you set a record for, if anything? And I bet if you think about it, you've definitely set records throughout your life, different milestones and things that you've wanted to reach. And it's not a record book per se. It's, it's important to keep the record book of our life. What are the things that we've and experiences that we've had in our life that give us joy and happiness and that we're grateful for and thankful for? And it's interesting to note that when we look back on the events of our life that we would have normally considered that we didn't, you know, negative, that we didn't think we were going to live through at the time, and we didn't know what we were going to do or how we were going to make it. Some of those events are actually in my gratitude journal, my record book, because they're the ones I learned the most from. Um, those things that we survive and struggle through and figure out and, and master become the stepping stones for the rest of our life. So those are some of my favorite records in my record book. Our, it, our uh, <clears throat> annual challenge, One Thing Every Day That Centers You, was about perfume and the power of smell. And that intense smells and perfume, for example, is an intense memory. It can help create intense memories. Remember, any em emotional event that is uh, experienced, when you experience a, a highly charged, either positive or negative emotional event, it gets linked up to the sights, the sounds, the the feelings, the smells, everything linked together and become attached to that memory. Well, perfume is a really incredibly positive way and smells are a way to attach meaning and remember certain events. So perfume got out my, my favorite perfume, which I've been wearing since I was about, geez, I think 18, maybe younger, uh, but 18 for sure was when I started wearing Oscar de la Renta. I love it. Still love it. They quit making it for a little while, which freaked me out because I had to go on eBay and buy some and stockpile it. But uh, this one I just got for my birthday for my sister, so that was awesome of her. So that was our our challenge for centering ourselves. You know, what smells? And, and that's another thing you could journal. You could write down. Just make a list of certain smells that you know trigger you. There are certain smells that trigger me in a positive way and trigger me in a negative way. Fruit fry larva triggers me to throw up. Or want to vomit it makes me nauseous turns out that when I was working at the bakery we opened a machine and we found some fruit fly larva in there and I was pregnant at the time and it just triggered my my throw up mechanism it's the first time ever in my job and in work and in professional life that I almost threw up in front of the people that I worked for or work with and for I guess my boss was there and then my managers were there too so that would have been really, really bad, but I held it together, made it to the bathroom, and then threw up. So some things can trigger us in a negative way. Well, I have smells that trigger me in a positive way. Lilacs always remind me of my, my grandfather, my dad's dad. Uh, baking goods, baked goods, certain um, sweets and bakery goods always remind me of my, my grandmother, my mom's mom. Um, there's certain smells that just set us off in a positive way and trigger us or take us back to an event from when we, our childhood. So. What are some of those for you? I would love if you'd share those in the comments below. Uh, working on, as I'm running, I'm you know, winding down with the granddaughters, working on my next projects. July is going to be, again, another kind of family, quiet business month for me intentionally. I'm intentionally kind of taking July off. August 1st, we'll do the Get Up and Go Challenge again, the free 30-day Get Up and Go Challenge. And I think I mentioned the other day I had an idea about something I want to do alongside that to really boost that and supercharge it and help probably 10 to 30 people really get the most they can possibly get out of that challenge and then some. Uh, but if that's something you might be interested in, hit me up in the comments below. I'm looking for a few beta people and uh, some other people to be part of that program. All right, that's it. That's all I've got today. I'm going to go check on the baby because I'm sure she's going to wake up any time now. We had very little sleep last night. Well, Grandma had very little sleep last night. I think... I think the baby had probably seven hours in one. No, she only had five hours in one block, two hours in another block. So I'm working on <clears throat> changing her sleep schedule because the one that she's gotten uh, with her parents is, is horrible. She's up till 3 a.m. and then she wants to sleep all the next day till 
you know, one o'clock, three o'clock in the afternoon. I'm like, no, we just need to keep pushing that back. And I had a couple days of really good progress where we were pushing it back. We got all the way down to 1030 and we stalled out and we went back up to 1 a.m. last night. So we're going to keep working on that and see, theoretically, I would love to see her go to bed at 830, sleep for, she sleeps like nine or 10. You're, normally she sleeps seven to 10 hours when she sleeps in a bulk like that. So we could just move that back to eight. 30 or 9 o'clock at night, that would be awesome. We'll see. All right. If I can help you in any way, hit me up in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow to document my journey, share what I'm learning, share what experiences I'm having, and what's working and what's not. Have an amazing day. Any questions, ask.